All right, we should be good to go. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of November 27th, 2023. My name is Erica Zikas, and as the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I'm calling this meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. This meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing will be posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I'll take a roll call and when I call your name, uh, please answer affirmatively. Catherine Porter. Here. Lindsay Schnarr. Here. Karen Winter. Here. Pat Oth. Present. And Erica Zikas, I'm present as well. Um, board members, if technological if technical issues arise, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raise hand function to ask a question or make a comment. I'll see your request and call on you to speak. And after speaking, please remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is reserved for public comment regarding items that are not on tonight's agenda. Please be aware the board will not respond to comments during general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when deemed appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raise hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the board chair. If a speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. Uh, we have one application, DRB FY 2024-08, Town of Amherst, um, revisiting the ADA compliant accessible trail at the former Hickory Ridge Golf Course. We'll then have uh, approval of meeting minutes, public comment period, and any other business not anticipated. So if we are ready to get started, and I see that we have um, Mr. Zomek in the audience, uh, we could jump in. Hi, Dave. Hi, good evening, everybody. I thought Hi, it was everyone. better. And I'm joined by Jennifer Mullins. Um, I thought it was better to uh, unblur my background just to show the great architecture here in uh, Town Hall. But um, um, anyway, I think Jennifer, you know, I was I was hoping that she could kind of take the lead in revisiting some of those items that that you all wanted us to follow up on. Uh, there were some questions about sign detail, bridge detail, um, kiosk detail, and a few others. And I think Jennifer is is well prepared to do that. And I'm happy to answer any questions uh, around the edges if that's Fantastic. okay with with you. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Are you able to share your screen? I believe I am. Let's okay, see. Great. And thank you both for coming back um, so quickly and uh, sharing all this info with us. Sure. So I have a, a number of documents here uh, <clears throat> that I, you know, I don't know in what order, but I, I'll just go ahead and start. This is a um, an example of a of a kiosk that. Um, is already, this is the type of kiosk that the town would install. This one, I believe, is at the um, Podic Coal. Is Jennifer, that I hate to interrupt, but I just want to let you know that we're, I think we're seeing your kind of your folder icons and not a big image on the screen. Oh, okay. Let me try again then. Okay. Um, I might have to open up the individual documents before sharing them. Uh, which is going to, you know, just makes it a little bit. All right, let me try. Okay. So here we go. This is a sample of a key, the kiosk. This is the one that I was speaking of when 
when you weren't seeing it. Can you see it now? Yeah, it, it's it's tiny, but we can see it. Maybe you can. Yeah, I. More. Let's see what we can do here. Um, resize the image. I can make it bigger. I think we can get the idea, though, regardless. Yeah. I have I have it in another form. If you just want to hold on, I can. Yeah, sure. Um, a bunch of these have, you know, they came to me in a form, and I've tried to manipulate them as well as I could. Oh, let's see, what do we have here? Sorry, this is taking, they're going away. <laughs> All right. Okay, now let's see if you can see this one. This might be also small, um, but it's, I don't know how to make it bigger for this application. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I can do it on my computer, but I don't know how to make it bigger for you so, guys. Jennifer, actually, if you look at the top right part of your screen, mm -hmm. um, so I'll say click cancel. So right there to your right. Okay. Yep. You see a little magnifying glass next to where it says 100%? Top right, right there, yep. There's a little magnifying glass with a plus sign on it. And if you click on that, it'll zoom in for you. A magnifying glass here? Yep, yep, to the left of that number 100. I just have dots that say more. More? Am I looking I don't, at the same I don't screen? see a 100. I have um, oh, okay. more hmm. slide control. Uh, I can say I can assign control privileges to you. Hmm. There you go. And if you want to. It's not working for me either. No. Yeah. I guess it's the best we'll get for, for zoomed in for now. But um, I, yeah. I, I've got it zoomed in on my screen. So why don't I share for this one? Okay. And then um, um, you can okay. drive for the rest of them. How does that sound? Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. So I've got the kiosk. Then you, you sent this one. Yeah. Which and I did, I sent them to Rob ahead of the meeting. Yeah, that's why I So have Okay, it. perfect. Oh, that's great. Yep. So you got it. Thank you. That's beautiful. All right. The floor is yours. <laughs> okay. Well, um, if you, if this is the kiosk one that, okay, so we've already kind of discussed it in various forms as we're poking through it. Um, this is a kiosk that already exists in another town property, um, and this will go up um, in the spot where in the, the last meeting we sort of showed a, a map where we have, there are different um, items shown on a key that, um, you know, where this will go, but this, it'll be in the accessible, like right near the parking lot when you come in so that it, you'll be able to see the map of the of the area where people, you know, the trails, there's the one trail that goes off. If you're in the parking lot looking at, say, looking at this kiosk, there's going to be a trail off to the left and a trail kind of off to the right. And this is, if I could add, this is pretty standard, you know, trail kiosk. We're trying to standardize them across town. Unfortunately, we've got different generations, different styles. It actually drives me crazy a little bit when I go to different conservation areas and I see them, but they are very expensive and we're just trying to standardize them across town. We're also trying to standardize what we put on these kiosks. Um, we're working with the Kestrel Trust. Um, they have helped us um, purchase uh, and fund many of the conservation areas in town. So um, they have a pretty good uh, trail um, uh, template that we are trying to work with them on. And so we would have standard rules and regulations, hours of operation, um, and a trail map on the kiosk, as Jennifer said, when you first arrive at Hickory Ridge, 
um, and park and disembark from your car and then enter the trail system. Okay, so um, yes, this is a good one too because it shows not only the um, kiosk, but it shows the sign that would um, be posted be out by the road out on um, West Pomeroy to indicate that there is, uh, you know, a conservation area. Again, we're trying to standardize these. We have not put these into production yet, but ultimately we would have one of these at every conservation area in town. So it's easily visible from the road from both directions, standardized, same colors using the uh, town of Amherst seal at the bottom and town of Amherst and the name of the conservation area. Where the red yeah. block is. Right. Uh, similar to the trustees of reservations, I should have said that is the trustees of reservation sign, yeah. um, which is at all of their um, their um, properties throughout Massachusetts. And you said this one that's labeled kiosk detail. I see that there are some other details on here, but I assume that that's just uh, showing us the construction. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I, I think you had asked, you know, on the map, it did show the potential for a kiosk in the future. We don't have fun, excuse me, not a kiosk, a, a, a structure, a shade, shade structure. structure. Um, mm -hmm. We don't have funding for a shade structure uh, at this time in the grant, um, but we will in all likelihood at least create a pad of um, a crushed stone pad that could be um could be finished, if you will, in the future and have some sort of a pavilion added to the, the, the park conservation area in the future. And I think Dave, um, similarly, there's a, there's a sample of a bench up here, um, but uh, the bench design has not been decided on. So I know we talked the last time about various different um, bench options, but um, we still don't have uh, a bench design that has been agreed on or that, you know, that has been, um, that we know we can re reproduce. Okay. The, re the reason for that is we're not quite in the bidding stage yet. Um, we're, we're beginning to pull together bid documents and we're still going, our, our team is still kind of going back and forth and looking at different designs. We think we're gonna go with a with a fairly simple design. It needs to be durable. Um, we are not going to, this shows a, I believe, I can't see the detail, but I believe it shows a poured concrete um, footing. We are not going to, in all likelihood, pour a full, uh, um, a full slab under these benches, that would be more uh, more of an application for a recreation area like Groff Park or Community Field. Um, we think we will do some sort of, these will be um, attached to, um, you know, poured in place, a sonnet tube or, you know, four sonnet tubes or something like that. We're, we're really grappling a little bit with what is a conservation look versus kind of what is a more urban recreation look. Any recommendations or or benches that you all, as as your you you know, design quite well. We're trying to get that feel um, between something like the benches at Groff Park versus um, or, or or contrasted with something like at the Conti Trail over in Hadley. Those most of those bridges are kind of built in place, built into the railing uh, of that trail at Conti at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Refuge. Um, and they're just, most of them, I think, are really just pressure treated uh, two by fours. They're they're quite nicely done. They're done with accessibility in mind. Of course, we will be doing that as well, but we really haven't found exactly what we want and like yet. So any recommendations you might make to us in writing will, will certainly be taken, um, um, you know, uh, into consideration fully. All right, thank you. Um, and Jennifer, do you want to take back over the screen share or do you want me just to click through the additional documents that we have here from you today? I mean, you you might as well go ahead because I think it's um, it's in a 
a much um, more concise format on your computer. On mine, mm -hmm. they're all different. They're all different types of files. And oh, um, right. so this <laughs> is the bicycle rack detail. Um, <laughs> this is going to be placed in the parking area uh, near, probably near the kiosk or, um, you know, somewhere off the actual uh, where the cars would travel, but um, visible when you first come in. There is a, a bylaw requirement that requires uh, bicycle racks to be placed in areas where there is parking, um, a specific number of spots. So this is going to satisfy that requirement as well as encourage, you know, just in general, encourage people to utilize the trail system um, via their bicycles and and with their bicycles. I think it's likely we would have more than one of these given the size of Hickory Ridge mm -hmm. and the length of the trails and the number of people who may bike on them. Um, I think uh, the DRB has seen these presented for the Podic Coal Conservation Area Parking um, or Trailhead and parking as well as the Sweet Alice parking lot over on Bay Road. Um, I think given the location, given what we think is going to be the popularity of this trail, I, I think we would probably be in the, you know, at least to start off two, maybe as many as four of these. So just to give the, the group a, a sense. Thanks, Steve. David Middle. Um, shall I go forward? Uh, if there are no further questions from the group, certainly. Yeah, I, just, I think um, we might save up our questions for. Oh, I see Karen has one. Do you want to? Do you have a specific about the bike rack, Karen? Yeah. When when can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you say four of them, how many loops are there on one? So how many bicycles would you accommodate? When you say four, you don't mean just four loops. Yeah, they typical typically come in. This is the loop like this. So this, you know. Um, so that's just two bicycles. That yeah, that's just two bicycles. So you only have room for eight bicycles um, in the whole park. In all likelihood, I mean, again, we'd be open to your recommendations. I, I don't know how costly these are off the top of my head, but we could certainly look at that with our, our planning department. I think, you know, if you look at UMass, there's just a rack of bicycles. Um, I, I don't think one loop, I don't know. Yeah, I think it would be worth looking at this, looking at UMass and seeing just a rack of bicycles, because I can imagine you're going to have 16 bicycles, maybe, for sure, uh, that I, I'm imagining. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, we'll definitely take a look at that. It, it's, it's, yeah, we're not, sh yeah, we're not sure where people are going to be coming from. I mean, the trails will be open to some degree to bicycles. So. Oh, I see. So you think that people we, will stay on their bicycles rather they than. They might. We won't be encouraging them to bike on the accessible loop trail, but they can bicycle and they'll be encouraged to bicycle on the North South trail. Mm -hmm. So, which is more of kind of a commuter getting, you know, certainly enjoying the, the environment and nature and all of that, but getting to and from East Hadley Road all the way down to the village center at Pomeroy at the new roundabout. Um, so I'm, but, but I, I don't, I, I think you're right. I think we should lean toward more. Because so. people also come in a group often. I mean, if I was going bicycling often, I'd be with my whole family. So there mm -hmm. might be, you know, four bicycles at once and you want to leave them someplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that would be a great recommendation. The more, more will be better here and we can look at, at cost of these and, and what our budget looks like for sure. It's a great suggestion. Thank you. So sure. Yeah. You, if you would like to uh, click on that existing, that's the storage shed that is in place. Now you can see it from the road from West Pomeroy. Mm -hmm. um, 
I believe, Dave, if I'm, my understanding is that it will remain, it um, might be painted. Is that correct? Yes, I think, I think at our last meeting, you all had some questions about um, both the, the existing clubhouse and then this building, which is to the west of the clubhouse. So uh, our intention is to have the clubhouse come down. As I mentioned, um, I don't have the budget for it yet, but I'm working to get to find that that funding to to take the clubhouse down and make the site more aesthetically um, appealing, et cetera, and and safer. Um, but this this Morton building is in great shape. Uh, it, we have every intention of keeping it and using it for uh, maintenance equipment. It's poured on slab, uh, so it's very dry and it's just in really good shape. It may, as Jennifer said, we certainly would would paint it at some uh, point in the future. It really plays very little to no role um, in terms of public. There won't be any public in it. Shouldn't be public around it. It'll be appropriately signed as it is now. Um, the public will pass by it on their way to the accessible trail, um, but we will not be encouraging public use. It's locked 24-7, 365 on both ends of the building. And it's really a, a very nice um, uh, place to store equipment that will maintain the trails and the meadows and, and, and the like. Great. Right. Um, Jennifer, did you yeah, those two images are um, there. One is a detail of the of the other uh, that shows the bridge sample bridges and um, an up close view of the railing. Now the bridge, this bridge that you can see where it meets the earth that would be built up so that someone you know, in a wheeled vehicle or someone who couldn't, um, didn't have the mobility to take a step would be able to go right from the trail to the bridge. Is this built somewhere on an Amherst property already? It is. That it looks is. like Sweet Alice, isn't it? No, it is um, in Lawrence Swamp. Oh, it's okay. over the um, Hop Brook. Okay. So, but that would be kind of the typical style we would use, um, you know, pressure treated, pressure treated um, bridge itself. And then um, the the um, railings would be designed very similar to this. And as I said, Erica, you asked me, I think you, you or I mentioned something about height and I think I was right, which is third over 30 inches requires a railing. So anything over 30 inches, um, we would have, I think this would be similar detail. There is um, one walking bridge, one boardwalk, and then one bridge, which will double as both um, for pedestrians and for maintenance, uh, conservation maintenance equipment um vehicles you know like a brush hog or a tractor and so a similar detail will be used on all three of those structures and this also is for safety so that young children cannot fall you know into in this case into the hop brook okay Actually, I, I, yeah that's hop brook yeah all right so we've seen um the bridge and railing, we've seen the bike rack, uh, the storage shed, the kiosk, and a signage idea. So I just wanted to open the floor to some conversation uh, with the DRB members. And I see Lindsay, you wanna share some thoughts? Hi, um, thanks for all these images. I think overall it looks great. Um, I just had a concern about the railing, um, and if I miss this, I apologize, um, but will it have an extension beyond where it meets the the bridge edge? I think it technically needs to come out about a foot beyond that edge so that um, like the corner is protected. Oh, that's a very good point. Are you saying from an ADA standpoint? <clears throat> yes. 
Yeah, that's a very good point. And again, I'd be happy to, you know, I know you you all will make recommendations to us, to the town on this project. So we would welcome that. I, I think Jennifer and I may have missed that. Um, this bridge is clearly not, um, because of the topography, um, we're actually adding, we're adding, um, ramps to either side of this. You can see this was actually an early picture. It's the bridge wasn't even finished. I think I see a two by four or something in the, in the mm -hmm. foreground there. Um, uh -huh. but that's a really good point that you're saying the railing should come out, um, a foot, were you saying, Lindsay? So the handrail, the handrail if, if it is, um, if it is to be ADA, then the handrail needs to come out a foot. Mm -hmm. um, but I could also imagine, you know, just in terms of safety, having, you could consider having like a triangular edge of railing there where it, instead of just coming at a 90 degree down, it, it mm -hmm. goes more to 45, just to give some kind of corner protection there. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, from an ADA standpoint, the, the handrail needs to come out a foot from the, the edge. And I believe that our, our ramps will be, and Jennifer can check this, but I believe they will be, uh, at, oh, I think they'll be poured in place concrete. I'm not sure, but we will have a ramp and then one of the I think part of it will be poured in place concrete as far as I know. We're working with Rob Mora, our building commissioner on that on that detail. But we will add the extension of the the handrails. Okay. While we're here on this bridge image, are there any other comments on the bridge and rail design? storage shed. You didn't talk about the color. Would you just be kind of repainting in this sage green? You know, we green? haven't even thought that even far there. ahead, okay. but if Fair. you have any, if you have any um, suggestions, we'd be open to them. Um, because it's in fairly good shape, we haven't really prioritized it and it's not part of the grant. We're as we said before, our deadline is is June of 24, so we're really yeah. pushing for that. But you know, I could see us doing a protective coat, a new protective coat of paint on this at some point. Um, Given that this is conservation land, it's, I think something pretty background neutral mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. I will. I will say. Let's see. Where are we? We're 23. I think it was the class, the Amherst Regional class of 23 or 22 somehow discovered a way into this barn and and had a wonderful celebratory uh, a party in, in our barn. So we beefed up our security somewhat. Um, <laughs> so uh, that was a little bit of a surprise to us, but they had quite the indoor celebration in our Morton <laughs> building. Luckily, nothing was really damaged and nobody was hurt, but um, it was a little bit of a surprise to us. They were they were quite um, covert about the whole operation, but we we increased our security, so no one's getting in there any longer. <laughs> Pat, do you want to jump in? Thank you. Um, I'm actually, I got my hand up a little late. I was going to make a comment about the bridge. Oh, please. Um, when, I, when I look at it, I'm concerned that the what that there's wide spaces that are the wire protects, but um, is it is it really protective to small children and and animals? Would it not be better to have more more wood spacing? Um, as a, you know, many many walkways like this require. Just, just I'm surprised to see the wire as opposed to. Um, more wood in the design to 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 make the spaces smaller. I think the the wire, as long as it's um, I mean, it looks like a welded wire fabric, like it's pretty stiff. I think it there's no issue of well, I, I just wonder, term, but I don't think it's a code issue. As long as there's no gap that's like more than four inches, and this is clearly right. much smaller than that. But I'll let Jennifer and Dave. I, just a question, only because I think the wood has the potential to be more durable than the wire. 
Mm. I think it is a, this was a, this, um, the use of this wire mesh, it is very robust. As Erica said, I don't know what gauge it is, but it is a very robust wire mesh. Um, I think, again, it was both for safety, but also aesthetic to kind of so that you can see the resource you're walking over, in this case, the, the brook. Um, I will say that all of the, the both the uh, pedestrian slash vehicular bridge, the pedestrian bridge, and the um, the boardwalk, when we say bridges, um, they'll be going over wetlands. They will not be going over the Fort River. They won't even be going over anything as high as this this bridge. So they're really quite low. These structures, and they're going over they're going over wetlands. We're basically pulling out culverts. So there's I'm not saying anyone will will. Uh, I'm not trying to lessen the concern about safety, but there's really very little, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the summer, you could walk over the the marsh that we're going to bridge over. Um, it's really just kind of a squishy area. So, um, um, so they're not very high at all. So, but, but again, they're robust wire mesh um with with no, virtually kind of a swampy areas under each one so uh, from a pet or child safety standpoint some kids may not even go over the bridge and they may just bound right through the uh the swamp um i'm um, hoping i'm hoping that all dogs will be on leash and that adds uh, an extra safety element for dogs yeah i think you know i thank you for your explanation and i do think the suggestion that the railings be extended is is the most important aspect of this comment. Mm -hmm. And of course, they will have um, they will have ramps. They will meet all all the standards of of accessibility. Thank you. Thank you all for right. your question. Comments on the bike rack. Janet, we had a conversation about numbers, and appreciate that you'll do some careful consideration of how many should be provided. Mm -hmm. um, we've approved this design before for other conservation areas. Painted black, I assume. They will be black, yes. It is, it's a great comment and we will take it because I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be really kind of a hybrid of a conservation area, recreation area. I will say that at Sweet Alice and Podick, I have never seen a bike at either bike rack, but that's just me. You know, I was actually a Podic Catherine Cole today. Both of those conservation areas are in difficult places, in my estimation, difficult places to bike to because of the high volume of traffic. Podic Cole is across 116 and um, Sweet Alice is on Bay Road, not far from the double roundabouts. Not to say that people wouldn't bike there, but um, they're they're not easy places to bike to, but I I do agree that this has the potential for people to come as a group, you know, leave your your three four bikes and go for a picnic or go for a hike or go bird watching or go fishing or you know come with friends, um, you know, young people, uh, kids coming from Orchard Valley might just buzz over on their bikes and say, hey, I don't want to take the risk of somebody walking off with my bike. I'm going to lock it up right here at the at the entryway kiosk that the, the um, yep so. and speaking of kiosk we've got um the kiosk design and then also uh signage <laughs> and again thank you for for sharing these i know that again this is something that we've approved at other locations um and we've talked about the we've talked about the the sign the street sign design before and i know you haven't implemented them yet but this is this looks very similar to what we reviewed for sweet alice anybody want to weigh in thoughts concerns Lindsay. 
I think it looks great overall. My only question was on the kiosks, if there's any intention for Plexi, if you mentioned that or not. I didn't quite get the end of that. <clears throat> Sorry, there was any attention for Plexi, for Plexiglass on the Yeah, front. Um, that's a really good question. Um, again, my my dream here is to to standardize all of these across town. It's really a question of funding. That's all it is. Is it's really not an easy thing for me or the town to fund these. Um, we do have Plexi in some locations. Um, I found it to be a little bit of a double-edged sword in that, yes, you get more life out of what you put behind the Plexi, but um, vandals love to scratch the Plexi. Uh, insects get behind them. The Plexi, um, you know, we're kind of moving more toward like a, a Lexan, uh, um, a Lexan uh, product. Um, but yeah, we we may cover some of the material there with some sort of plexi, some sort of plastic covering, like the maps, so that they weather better in the UV. You know, UV affects everything you put on these and fades everything. So there may be part of the kiosk that we put plexi on. I think a really good example of that is at the Applewood Orchard Orchard or. At Applewood, there's the Orchard Arboretum Conservation Area, and that has a very similar kiosk to this. And we've worked with the um, the steering committee at Applewood, and they've covered one side of it with Plexi, and it's it's worked quite well. Again, low vandalism area. Um, you know, you spend a lot of money on Plexi, and then one person comes by and vandalizes it, and you're out whatever, 150 bucks or, you know, I don't know the exact cost, but yes. So that, that would be a consideration. Thank you. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that I would, I asked the question more as a discussion. So I think that it makes sense to consider where it might be appropriate and where it may not be. And if there's various products that may not lend themselves to the issues that Plexi typically does, whether it's condensation or vandalism or, um, mm. you know, yes. various things getting trapped. Um, so yeah, I was mostly just curious um, what the plan is for that. Well, we appreciate your time. And, and again, you know, any comments, um, recommendations, suggestions, guidance, we, we would appreciate it. And Jennifer and I have kind of heard you and taken some notes. Um, and the sooner anything comes from the DRB and uh, through, um, through Rob would be wonderful. As I said, we are pulling together, together our bid documents this month, or excuse me, next month. Uh, I'm jumping the calendar here in December. And we want to try to bid this out in January and try to get a jump start on um, spring construction. That's great. Um, yeah, I think uh, DRB folks, I would love to hear um, a motion to approve of the, uh, I don't know, what, what do we call them? Des features, design elements um, shown to us tonight. Uh, with, and I was taking a few notes, it seems like the, the only real actionable recommendation is to ensure that the handrail design on the bridges uh, meets code, extends beyond uh, the base of the bridge um, by a foot. Although that's really the guardrail, there is no handrail. <laughs> um, but checking in on, on that, I think seems important, but uh, I think everything else is kind of meeting with approval. Um, everything that we've seen so far, we'd love to see that move forward. Rob? Sorry, it took me a second to meet myself. Um, so just to make sure we're clear about, I guess, what recommendations before we take a motion. So just from my notes and what I've heard, it seems so far one recommendation is to make the railings come out a foot off the bridge on each side. Or as Lindsay mentioned, there's also the option of taking, I guess, the railing from a 90 degree to a 45 degree as well. 
Um, Lindsay, do you want to elaborate on that a little bit more, or is that something that you suggest as an alternative? Um, sure. Yeah. Thank you for asking. I, mm -hmm. I, from a code standpoint, if they are to be ADA, just make sure mm -hmm. that the handrail meets those requirements. I think that's okay. just, I would just make it that general. Yeah. Um, yep. and from a, from a, a comfort standpoint, you might want to consider mm -hmm. changing the shape of that edge condition just so that it, or the extension of it, just so that it feels that it protects somebody at that corner. Okay. Um, and then I have written down, um, was there anything discussed about the utility building? I have written down keeping the color as a conservation neutral. I'm sure that was pretty much implied from discussion, right? Okay. And then we have possibly exploring plexi on the kiosk, but it has to be an area with low vandalism. So does the board want to keep that sort of like a recommendation to explore or does the board not feel that's necessary to keep in there? No? Okay. I don't so, feel it's necessary. Okay. So I guess um, the biggest one is just the railings for the bridge. Yeah. And then, of course, we, uh, we, there was yeah. also Karen's suggestion to consider the, the bike racks, bike yeah. racks, but I don't think that's really a design consideration. So, oh, Karen, please. Um, yeah, not the design, but I, I, I hope when you're looking at the bicycle uh, racks, there are mm -hmm. some that might be less expensive. They're much lower. They're not this big loop, yeah. but... There's a number of them, just uh, like ten in a row, little ones, and you just park. You just put your your belt uh, around the bicycle on that. So, just a recommendation to really look at the different kinds of bicycle racks. I think maybe the design uh, is of a bicycle rack should be just very simple, but mm. I do think you should uh, have possibilities for a group to come and be able to lock up their bicycle if possible. That's just my recommendation. And it's, again, it's not design, but. Okay. So like, um, I guess having more concentrated bike racks in a single area, as opposed to just like these single loops that you'd see every once in a while, like every like two or three feet or something like that. Um, is that, I know it's you're mostly not talking about from just design standpoint, but you're talking about more from a usage standpoint, correct? Yeah. Okay. No, that makes sense. All right. That's all the questions I had about recommendations. Okay, so could I ask for um, a motion with recommendations as summarized by Rob to approve? I, I would make the motion as summarized by Bob for the recommendations concerning the design and improvement of the bridges and um, the number of bike racks. Thank you, Pat. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Catherine. All those in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Unanimous. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your work on this. Good luck with all the bid proposals. And Thank you so much. Forward. Thank you very much. We're we're very much wanting to be under construction April, May, June. So Great. we're going to try to work quickly and have at least the ADA loop done by the end of June and the north south done sometime later in the summer. So Fantastic. before you dash, before you dash, um, I was we we have to approve uh, meeting minutes, um, and there was one comment, uh, one statement in the minutes that. Um, Kind of in response or clarification to a question said all paths will be accessible and my memory served that it wasn't all and i just wanted to what would be the appropriate language to substitute yeah let me see if i can quickly summarize that so um our intention uh obviously we we have a park grant to consider the to build the loop trail to the west which we've been talking about this evening that will be fully accessible the north south trail will be fully accessible the connection between those two will be accessible we don't have funding to build that yet but then the remainder of the trails will be uh typical and I use the word typical, um, you know, um, with, with some purpose here, typical conservation trails. We kind of call them single track trails, just 
like many of the 80 miles of trails we have in Amherst, they will simply be a mowed path and they will not be accessible. So there will be many options at Hickory Ridge to go north, to go over toward the village center, to do a, about a three quarter mile loop on this accessible trail and get between those two trails. But then if you want to go in other places, you know, it's 150 acres, it's a pretty big area. If you want to, for instance, go around one of the um, solar arrays, that will be a single track conservation type trail and will simply be a mode path. So That's we're giving good. as many opportunities for those people um, with disabilities to get out there in nature, to get down near the Fort River. And our design has incorporated, you know, um, access to the river, um, access to wildlife areas, uh, scenic vistas, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to be accurate that not all the trails will be fully yeah. ADA. Yeah. So the trails that you mentioned, Dave, are that loop trail at the west and then that north-south trail. Those are the mm -hmm. only two trails that you're just, okay. And, and then we will in phase, mm -hmm. I call that kind of phase one. Phase two, yeah. we will connect the north-south trail with the loop trail and mm -hmm. then you will be able to move or, or or you will have accessibility between those two trails. And the, the, the single track conservation type trails will be mowing as soon as we get approval from the conservation department, or excuse me, conservation commission and the state, because we are being regulated by a number of state agencies because Hickory Ridge is such a sensitive ecological area mm -hmm. that um, we have many hoops to jump through um, beyond just the Conservation Commission, the Planning Board, and um, some state agencies. So, so really, really exciting. But thank you for all of your guidance, and we, we hope to see you all out there in the summer of 24. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Rob, I didn't notice any members of the public we were just eight on the participants um so i didn't call yep. anybody in but thought i'd double check um all right we can move on to approval of minutes um i'll do a screen share and so um you know, my usual record for minutes was two pages, but unfortunately I had to get to the third page for this last meeting. There was a lot <laughs> that was talked about. Um, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I did take out on your one point about the accessibility of trails. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess just didn't want others... to misrepresent mm -hmm. their um, their intentions since this is a public yeah. document. Um, no, it's I a understand. lot of accessible trail, but it's not all of the trails. Yeah. Um, all right. So Forgive me if I, I usually scroll through these um, mm -hmm. for the for board members, but if you all have read them, I don't need to take your your time to do this. Let me know, please, <laughs> if you want me to scroll or. I don't need you to scroll. Anyone else? No. If you could just scroll kind of quickly, that would be helpful for me. Got you. Thanks. Speed reading. Yeah. So we did uh, Gabe's underground approval of their signage. The, the recommendations were to just be really mindful of their blue. And there was no, there was no decision made, no uh, vote. Uh, we just had a nice conversation with um, Dave and Jennifer on Hickory Ridge. And so obviously we have to change that uh, yep. ADA. And you can do what you did last time and just vote to approve with the recommended changes and I'll make those changes accordingly and then post the minutes tomorrow. If the board's satisfied with the minutes, that is. I don't want to assume that you like the minutes. Maybe you want them to be rewritten completely. <laughs> 
that would be unreasonable. Yeah. Um, let me get back to my regular screen. All right, so um, motion to approve with amendments. Second. Thank you. A second. Second. Thank you, Pat. All those in favor of approving the minutes Aye. from here. Let me get the date. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you guys are ahead of me. Uh, October 30th. Great. Approved. Thank you. Approved. Okay. Fantastic. Um, any other business not anticipated? No. Okay, Rob, could I ask you to identify what our next meeting date is? Sure, let me pull out my calendar. Um, so I noticed the end of December is going to be tricky yeah. with the holidays for people. Um, so <laughs> the last meeting date would have been December 25th, but that's Christmas. Uh, so I guess for now, the last meeting date could be December 18th, which is the third Monday. Or if the board decide that they would rather skip the month of December, that's also an option. But I would say as of right now, the most logical date would be December 18th for okay. our next meeting, just because of the holiday. The 18th works for me. I don't think we need to decide now, but if anybody, mm -hmm. yeah. if we could do a calendar check, if you have a a conflict already in place that would be helpful uh karen um i'm going to be gone from the 17th until january 10th oh, oh wow <laughs> i mean Vacation. i can come in but there's a time change sure yeah uh, the the 18th works for me okay thanks pat yeah okay. i could do it uh, okay. why don't we pencil it in i think that's a yeah. good plan and, uh, I, and i'm seeing the, like a, we're likely to have a quorum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but as long as we have a, a do if we have at least, yes, yeah, I mean, as long as we have at least three people, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. And there's... at this point, we don't know if we even have any applicants. So yeah. good to have it penciled in and we'll cancel if we can. All right. Great. It was lovely to see you. Me too. Rob, thanks for your continued guidance and shepherding um everyone sure. have a lovely a lovely rest of this month and beginning of december all right thank you thank, thank you, you. Have the same to all. bye